Earlier this year, I made and self-published my very first graphic novel, 178 pages, fully colored, and it was a lot of work, but so worth it. This was the first video I made on this channel. I mean, I had a couple before this, but those were just trailers for my graphic novel. This was my first real video with my face and shit where I just talk to the camera and share my journey on launching a very successful first Kickstarter. I don't really know if it was first video magic or my channel was just new to the algorithm, or I've just gotten worse over time. But that video remains to be my most popular video I made by a long shot. I mean, seriously, the stats just obliterate every other video I made since then. So I started riding the high of making YouTube videos, but I also wanted to stay consistent in my comic book making production. How's a fella supposed to do it all, huh? This past year, I learned a couple things about balancing comic creation with content making. And before the new year is really into its groove, I say as I'm making and releasing this video like a month too late, I I thought it could be helpful if I shared my thought process and rattled off a few peaks and pits from last year as I go into 2024 with new goals and a revamped mindset. So originally, I'd be bold enough to say that I started off balancing my comic making with my content creation like a goddamn pro. I was uploading comic pages to my Patreon three times a week while producing one or two videos every month. But then the cracks started to form. So I was actually lucky enough to start my very first Kickstarter with a hefty 180 page, Last of Us inspired, frozen apocalyptic adventure called Blood in the Land. If you've watched any of my videos, you know, you know that I find a way to plug my comic in every single time. So annoying, right? Marketing your comic? <laughs> hey, but links in the description to check it out yourself. So part one was done. The next logical thing to do was part two. No brainer, right? But I had to start rethinking my development process for part two because there were don't want to say hurdles, but there were a couple of hurdles. I came to terms that part two was not going to be made as quickly as part one. There's, there was just no way around that. I mean, look, it's roughly the same length as part one, like around the 200 page mark. And I feel I was able to make part one so efficiently because I had all that downtime during the COVID pandemic to get my shit together. Couple that with kicking off my YouTube channel and the creative plate just started to stack up. Not to mention that people were starting to watch my stuff and learn about Blood in the Land. I couldn't have everyone just wait around for at least another year for part two to be written, drawn, and colored. Gotta strike while the iron is hot. So I decided to do something that I was super against originally, breaking up my story into smaller chunks. <gasps> and when I mean smaller chunks, I mean smaller than the two parts that I was settling with, which I didn't even wanna do that once upon a time. I was dead set on delivering a 400 page brick for you to consume in like one sitting as if you were watching a movie. Thank God I came around on that. Blood in the Land still probably wouldn't even be out in the world right now if I stick to that mindset. That really makes you think. So I launched a smaller Kickstarter campaign for Blood in the Land Part 2 that only consisted of the first two chapters as a way to stay on people's radar and keep pushing my comic out. And I made it two chapters because that totaled up to like 50 pages. And I personally feel that you can get a lot more out of that than a 20 page blip. Look, I've just never been someone that's gotten a real satisfaction from reading those like smaller 20 page type comic issues. I tend to fly through reading them because they're 20 pages and I'm a fucking pro at reading. <laughs> but by the end, I'm just left like not really wanting more, but instead wishing that they just held off until they could give me a bigger chunk to enjoy. Not to get on a whole thing about size mattering. <laughs> I mean, look, you can only do so much in 20 pages. And I feel like when it's too small and quick like that, I just don't really feel the character development or the plot progression or any of that stuff because the real cohesion and flow shine when you get to read them all together. You feel me? And I know I'm... <laughs> Okay, look, I know I'm shitting on like the most basic foundation of how comics are made and sold, but like, I don't know. I need more than the two inch Punisher, the 20, the 20 page Punisher. There's a joke there, workshop that. I also held off on coloring anything to help speed up production. While it all would be colored eventually, I, I don't know, I saw the black and white version as just like a cool exclusive way to see how things were being made before their final form. And then the Kickstarter failed. Oh, ah. No, it definitely sucked. Um, it actually, it was a huge bummer. I definitely jumped the gun on a few things. I didn't market it that crazy hard compared to my first Kickstarter. I mean, like, I made some process reels of me animating my trailer, and then I made one cool trailer that I still love to rewatch. But I don't know. I think I just sort of assumed that past readers plus new subscribers on my YouTube channel would all want to jump in on the fun. But if I wanted to release more comics in the future and... <laughs> not have them fail. I knew putting a larger focus on my content marketing and my internet presence as a whole would be my best bet. Thus, 
2023 became the year of my social media. Crown Obsidian brand needed work. And from that point, I went from making a video every month to trying to release a video like every two weeks. But then the scales started to tip and my comic making hustle began to falter ever so slightly. I could blame it on the failed Kickstarter at the beginning of the year, but truth is content creating and making YouTube videos just started to feel more fun. I was getting more immediate satisfaction from YouTube. And like, what I mean by that is I would have a video idea, shoot and edit it, and then release it for you to watch and enjoy. Nothing more to it. Wipe my hands clean from it, and then it was just time to think of like the next video. It felt productive and creative, and it kept me moving forward. But then on the comic making side, I was getting less and less of those dopamine hits. I wasn't confident enough to make a smaller Kickstarter, especially while I was building an audience. So drawing Blood in the Land Part 2 became more of a behind the closed doors operation again. In other words, I more or less regressed back to like the original Blood in the Land plan, which only then did I truly understand a piece of advice that I have dismissed for years. Seriously, every artist, animator, creator, they all have said the same thing. Start small. I don't want to waste my time with some little itty bitty 15 page offbeat story. I got big ideas and they got to be told in a big way. Here people were telling me not to start my creative career with some big epic adventure. Keep it simple, make a one shot, make a zine, which I now know how to pronounce correctly, but now I get it. Now I understand that the two cents of starting off small is more for your mental health and drive versus the actual story. I wasn't getting a lot of fulfillment finishing my chapters. It felt like just another rung on the ladder. I have currently finished a to chapter four, which totals to about uh, 95 pages. And guess what? I'm still only halfway through. There's like a pff, another hundred pages that I need to draw. And then I got to color them and the, the light at the end of the tunnel just felt very far away. I wouldn't say discouraging is the right word, but look at it like this. In 2023, I got about halfway through my comic. In that same time, however, I was able to make like 17 videos, get them across many eyes, accumulate new subs and followers, and even getting a nice amount of people buying Blood in the Land to read, which was, which is still just so fucking awesome when I get those little notifications. In my mind, it just feels like I made a lot more progress on the content creative side versus my comic, which I, really started to get bummed out about because making the comic felt more like a deadline that I was just not hitting and the fun started to get sapped from it. So for this new year, I aim to keep the creative content side alive and still make videos as consistent as I can, but I'm also ready to reinvest a lot more time into my drawing and comic making again. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I, I miss sitting down and making stories. I miss drawing. I miss, I want, I want to hold another book in my hand. I want to put another story out there for you to read. I can't sit on the same old book another year in and still call myself a comic creator. It just, it just feels lame. But the most important thing, the single most important thing I want to make sure for this year is to have more fun. Have fun making comics, even if the Kickstarters aren't wildly successful. Have fun making videos, even if the views aren't in the thousands. Have fun telling stories, however I need to, just to see them get done and made. They can be compiled into a big book when the time comes. A lot of last year's grind set was to launch Crown Obsidian as like a full-time career. And for a while, I was only thinking and working for that end result. And it just became a lot more about the destination rather than the journey. But this shit, it, it takes time. You know, especially in the indie comics route, it's important to be in the moment, in the journey, and have fun riding that wave too. So I want to incorporate more types of videos that keep me drawing, and maybe even make some comics that aren't affiliated with my main series. In other words, I want to bring one shots into the mix. Woo! They sound fresh, they sound exciting, and honestly, I see this as a good way to practice just honing my comic making craft while I'm staying consistent with making videos. On the comic side of things, I really want to release a new series this year. Time to add some variety to my comics portfolio. I briefly mentioned it in my Vomit Draft video. It's a comedy fantasy series series. I'll pitch it as Legend of Zelda meets Rick and Morty. And man, I've just been having so much fun writing it. What really gets me excited for it too is I'm going the 10 episode season route. Compared to Blood in the Land, these are shorter scripts, which means shorter page count, which hopefully means I can make them quicker. If I can make them faster, then I can reignite that sense of accomplishment from completing a story or series that I just sort of neglected last year in favor of content creating. I'm all about seeing more tangible results on my fruits of my labor bullshit. I mean, shit, this might be the hype for me recording this video right now, but I'm even feeling crazy enough to maybe drop another series. I have a comedy superhero series that's been roughly written. I have a kaiju manga idea that's been in my head for way too long now. Oh my 
God, this is going out of control. Somebody stop me. And the crazy part is I'm willing to try and figure out how to make them as smaller chapters until it could be a respectable book size like Blood in the Lamb. That's how far I've come. I'm willing to revisit and try some approaches that I shut down in the past. I just realized I don't want all these great ideas to just sit in my computer or in my head waiting for their turn until Blood in the Land and all its sequel books are finished. If I strictly operated like that, then I mean, like who knows when some of these stories would see the light of day. Life's too short. Time moves quick, and the indie comic scene, ever-changing. So instead of trying to think about what's the most, like, industry professional or responsible way to deliver comics, at this point in my life, I'd rather just be able to see more of my stories come to life. It'll still take some planning and getting used to on how to do it in a way that I'm comfortable with, but for the bigger goal of just having them made, like, yeah, that's worth it. I fear that I'm making it sound like Blood in the Land is getting cancelled or some shit. It's not. It's a story I love very much. I just want to vary it up for a minute. And I know myself, so I know that Blood in the Land will take over my brain again like a storm once I get a good artistic flow again. Hey, so, uh, thanks for sitting with me through this whole spiel. Hopefully you got some crumbs of, uh, motivation or advice that you can apply to your own creative goals. But remember, the fun is the most important part. Guys, thank you if you've watched my stuff. Thank you if you've read my comic. All the support and engagement this past year has been incredible. And I can tell that 2024 is going to be a great next chapter. All right. Well, I know it's like the end of January, but I hope that you've had an amazing new year and turn up. Peace. Peace.